Today's readings urge us to think a bit about a virtue that we don't think about very often, and that is the virtue of humility. In our culture and in our society, humility is not often mentioned as something that people should seek. A humble person is not usually seen to be a strong man or woman unless they happen to be exemplary in their humility. People like Pope John Paul II or Mother Teresa. More often than not, we think humility is the equivalent of meekness or inappropriate mildness, but often in the sense of submissiveness and a lack of leadership. And yet, humility is called the basis for wisdom in the book of Sirach from today's first reading, and a sure and solid foundation for life. It is one of the it is one of attentiveness on the part of a disciple who awaits words that will help guide and direct his or her life. And to be in that kind of a position is not only to be humble, but it is also to be wise. I think there are three ways of understanding humility as a source of spiritual strength and a foundation for holiness. First, humility enables us to be grounded in truth about who God is and to be open to the splendor of God in our lives. Secondly, humility is present when we know who we are and understand God's role in our lives. And finally, humility is directly related to our relationship to other people and to the responsibilities as faith-motivated citizens of our country and of our society and indeed of our campus. From the days God first revealed himself to our days, to walk humbly with God is the image which is often used to describe the right relationship between God and the human family. We are called to become more and more aware of our dependence on God and of our dependence on each other. This first step on the road to wisdom stands in sharp contrast to an excessive search for power and for independence and for complete self-sufficiency, which our culture treasures. Mary, our patroness, is the person who most clearly stands out in our religious tradition as an example of humility. Mary, the powerful mother of God, Mary, the powerful mother of the church, and Mary, our mother, is the example of humility. Mary collaborated fully with God's plan for her life and became the mother of Jesus. Like all parents, she was the first teacher in the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ himself, and she also became his first disciple. Mary was present at every single moment of the life of Jesus and was one of the few who did not abandon him at the moment of his agony and his death on the cross. To be open to the splendor of God in our lives is to understand that with deep within each one of our hearts, God has planted a thirst for holiness that can only be quenched by a deepening of our relationship to God through worship and through prayer. Humility enables us to know ourselves well and to understand our great potential as believers as men and women of faith. 
We try to be open to all people. In contrast to the people Jesus spoke about in today's gospel, we try to rub elbows and to relate to all people, regardless of their color or race or social status, or more importantly, perhaps in these days, their ideology, their place on the political spectrum. We realize that all of us, that each one of us is dependent on God for our very existence and dependent on God's grace if we are to grow in holiness. We try to attain self-knowledge and to accept ourselves as the people we are. We try to have a good sense of self, neither overblowing our talents on the one hand nor putting ourselves down on the other. The startling truth is that Jesus Christ loves you, loves me, loves all people at every moment of our lives exactly the way we are if we try to follow in the footsteps of his son. Because we know our own weaknesses and because we are sinful people, we have to be open to forgiving others and to accepting forgiveness from them. That too is a sign of humility, not just to forgive in a magnanimous way, but to accept forgiveness as well. And just as importantly, we share who we are with other people. We try to see ourselves and each brother and each person as a brother and a sister, a son and a daughter of God, just like we are. We try to see ourselves as Jesus Christ saw all people. Called to life by God, loved by God, regardless of the circumstances of our life or of their life, and sometimes precisely because of the way we handle moments of sorrow and joy, moments of success and failure, we always do so, looking to Jesus Christ as our model. This means that we must undertake an examination of our conscience, of our lives, and of the values of our behavior in the light of the teachings of the gospel of Jesus. We know that in many ways, each of us is a product of our society and of our culture. We know that many aspects of the values in which our culture holds in the highest esteem have little or nothing to do with the rare solid ground on which our faith enables us to stand. The law of God that we are asked to follow is to love God and to love one another so that our love for God will enable us to accept the holiness and the grace that comes our way with humility and purpose. So may we walk humbly with our God and make ourselves available to all people without awaiting anything in return. Like Jesus, may we be friends of the weak, of the poor, of the disinherited, of immigrants, and of outcasts of our society. May we use our gifts with humility to draw ourselves and others, all others, closer to the God who called them into existence as he did us and who loves them as deeply as he loves each one of us.